Um, good afternoon. So today the Cabinet approved a new uh, ACC levies for consultation for next year. These proposed levy reductions will put half a billion dollars a year back into the New Zealand economy and contribute towards keeping the cost of living down. This government has turned ACC around from the dire state with record losses that Labor left it in. A boost in rehabilitation rates has been one of the major reasons for the turnaround. Savings in administration costs have also contributed. ACC is now on target uh, to be a fully funded, securing the future of our 24-7 no-fault accident insurance scheme. The proposed levy on wage and salary earners is reduced by 17%. This saves households $340 million a year, or $170 a year, for someone on the average wage. The proposed levy on employers and self-employed is reduced by 22%. This reduces costs for businesses by $247 million a year. For a typical uh, Kiwi small business with seven employees, this would mean a saving of $1,120 per year. I'm now going to ask um, Nick to make a few further comments and we'll take any questions you might have uh, in relation to ACC and then we'll come back to the balance of the press conference. Nick. Uh, thanks, Prime Minister. Uh, these levy reductions for workers and businesses are significant and are possible because of the improved state of ACC's finances. After the massive losses of $2.4 billion in 2007 and $4.8 billion in 2008, ACC has delivered consistent surpluses of about $2.5 billion per year. The overall solvency of the scheme is now at 72%, which is its best ever. The reason we can afford these levy reductions in both the earners and workers' account is that both are set to reach 100% solvency in the next year. The solvency in the motor vehicle account is at 66%, but improving. It is proposed that the licence fee and petrol tax remain unchanged next year, which will also help in keeping inflation down. If we maintain ACC's current financial performance in three years' time, there will be room for levy reductions for motorists. The big improvements ACC has made that enable these levy reductions are to the rehabilitation rates and the better management of costs. Income compensation is ACC's biggest ticket item. We have 20% fewer people on accident compensation than three years ago because of the success of programs to get people back to work more quickly. ACC's costs were out of control between 2005 and 2008 when they grew by 50% or from $2 billion a year to $3 billion a year. We've reduced claim costs by $450 million a year, or about 15%. $200 million of that saving is in the income compensation. $60 million is in the changes that we made to physiotherapy. $16 million in administration costs. $12 million in the hearing changes. $8 million in elective surgery. It is these cost savings that we're now in a position to be able to pass on to both households and businesses. I do want to acknowledge the very hard work and a pretty difficult job that both the board uh, and the staff of ACC has done that has enabled us to be able to pass these benefits on to households and businesses. Isn't it actually the case that people are being declined ACC rather than everyone just being sent back to work? I mean, people are actually not being given the support that they may have been given previously? No, I don't accept that, and it's interesting if you look at that report that was provided at the Select Committee, only 4% of people that were coming off ACC were going on to welfare benefits, and half of those were going on to the unemployment benefit, suggesting that they were work ready. Uh, secondly, if you look at that very steep increase, was there a 50% increase in the number of accidents between 2005 in 2008. No, there was not. Costs got out of control and effectively we've seen a billion dollar increase in the claim costs and with the savings measures that we've taken, pulling back about a third of that. Aren't you just um, taking back some of the increases that you had um, over the last couple of years, reading the story in New Zealand Hill in 2009, saying that um, the cost of the average family of ACC rises was going to be $315 a year. So, 
okay, it come down, but... Well, it's actually pretty simple, Guy. If ACC is making $4.8 billion losses, levies inevitably are going to have to go up. If ACC is well managed and is providing surpluses, then government's got the room to reduce those levies. So, if you go back to when you first became Minister, is the average family going to be paying less or more under these changes? If you look at for the, uh, the, the earner rate that workers pay, uh, that was back at a dollar seventy and is effectively uh, coming back to that. If you look in terms of the account for businesses, I think it was about a dollar twenty four and is now coming back to a dollar fifteen per hundred dollars of earnings. So when you take into account the rises in motor vehicle registration and other things, your average key is still paying more um, in ACC levies than when you came in as minister, right? Oh effectively. ACC's costs were out of control. This government had to increase the levies as well as make a whole lot of other changes to stop it just accumulating more and more debt. We've now got that debt under control and that gives us the capacity to be able to pass on the benefits of that prudent financial management back to levy payers. The alternative would have been to bank the savings and the benefits before you got them. I think that would not be prudent management. And that is why I think the changes that we've made have been in the right order. That is, get your costs under control, and when you do, then pass those benefits on to families and businesses. So you take the $8 million in elective surgery. How have savings been made there, apart from saying to people, you're not having that operation, where you might have been able to previously? Yeah, well, let's, let's take a, a detailed look at elective surgery. And $8 million of that saving uh, is from the elective surgery. We saw elective surgery costs go from $90 million a year to 240 million a year. Now, does anybody really believe that that was because there was a huge increase in the number of accidents? No. There's this grey zone between what is fairly a cost from an accident and what is a health cost. So and ACC was effectively becoming a de facto health <coughs> insurer. And what we're saying as a government is ACC is about providing cover for accidents. The number of elective surgeries that ACC will fund this year will be higher than every year, uh, bar those beyond 2007 8 where it did grow out of control. And like I say, effectively, ACC was funding surgery that was not accident related. So you don't accept that anyone who has a valid ACC claim is now not getting it? So well, when, the ACC, blown out when ACC deals with 1.4 million claims per year, there is always going to be examples. And for instance, on the 1st of July, we made changes to the review system to improve it by making it completely independent of ACC to improve the integrity of that system. What I can reassure claimants is that this government is absolutely committed to those people that have genuine accident claims getting the surgery, getting the rehabilitation and getting the income compensation that they deserve. What about sexual abuse? You know, there was a lot of um, talk at the time about people who maybe had been promised counselling or, or who thought that they would be able to join them and then found that they weren't. What do you say to people who, under the old scheme, might have had expectations? Oh, there has been some difficulties, and that's why I did an independent review of the way in which ACC was managing sensitive claims. Uh, Dr Barbara Disley was appointed to do that review. She most recently produced a report in April which gave ACC a very positive report and said that it was managing the issue of those very sensitive claims well. In a turnaround from a 4.8 billion deficit to a 2.5 surplus, um, how much of it was attributed to the sorts of changes you've outlined today? How much was um, improvement in the investment account and in the various other ways that ACC yeah. measures its support? Yeah, good, good question. Let me just try and give you a uh, parallel. The first thing is, of that $4.8 billion loss that ACC made in the 2008-09 year, not one dollar of that was from investment losses. Labor has sort of spun that line for some excuse for their pretty poor management. It was all about the huge increase in liabilities. And the simple way that I would explain it is this. During the term of the last government, the number of people on ACC income compensation was growing by 700 per year. They were predicting that by 2020, the numbers on ACC compo would grow from 13,000 to 20,000. That had a horrific impact on the liabilities of the corporation. Since we've been the government, rather than it going up by 700 per year, it's actually been dropping by 1,000 a year. Now that's as a consequence of a pretty big investment, pretty intensive, 
around those people that are on long-term compo. And that has delivered that reduction, and that really is at the heart of how the government is able to provide these pretty big reductions in levies for both workers and for businesses. So what about the investment side, though? Is that, how is that performing? Well, if you look at ACC's investments in the last financial year, the 2010-11 financial year, ACC has made high levels of return on its investments than we expected above budget, but that has been completely offset by the drop in interest rates and the impact on the liabilities. So in the last year, financial factors, both the decline in interest rates and the better than average returns on investments has completely bounced out. Just to explain that some more, if the interest rates drop, the amount of capital that ACC needs to meet its future liabilities increases quite substantially. So those financial factors in the last year have actually completely balanced each other out. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, just in terms of ministerial activity on Wellington today, tomorrow, 